Hi guys, it's Nancy. I got a new Spellbinder stamp, House Mouse. This is called Snuggle Up. I also got Candy Hearts. Candy Hearts. Doesn't that bring back some memories, some nostalgia? But anyway, today we're going to watercolor with the Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Pencil Set 1. It's the only set I have. I was not overly impressed with these, but I don't think I gave them a fair chance. So we're going to play with them today. A lot of like neutral winter colors here. So I thought this was the perfect set to play with them. So I have this set up. It's a, a red rubber cling set stamp. It does come with three sentiments. The sentiments say the snuggle is real. Sending hugs and miss you. We're not going to worry about those sentiments right now. Um... And I'm using Spellbinder's watercolor cardstock, my first time using this. I have cut it down with my Spellbinder's trimmer, which cut through it like butter, right? I uh, cut it down to five and a half by four and a quarter. You get 10 sheets in this pack, eight and a half by 11 sheets, 110 pounds. So nice, heavy duty. It is textured and it kind of has a cream color to it, but... Um, it has a textured side and a smooth side. So I have cut that down. We're going to move our stamps to the side here. So you can see it is very highly textured on one side and very smooth. Oops, we're not going to use that piece. Okay, we're going to use this piece. And I have some Ranger Archival ink that I thought would be good to do some watercoloring. Now I have not used this ink in a while, so hopefully we'll be okay. Seems like I don't need to re-ink it. So I make sure I have good coverage. I'm just being rather lazy today. I'm being a lazy crafter. Sometimes we have those days. Okay, and then I'm going to bring my paper, my panel, again, cut down to eight, uh, five and a half by four and a quarter, and I'm going to rub, as my friend Lisa says, rub, 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 rub. Excellent. Okay, lazy crafting paid off today. I am going to just really quickly dry this with my heat tool. Okay, and then I have a piece of paper towel. Okay. And then I just have some watercolor brushes and we're just going to watercolor, hopefully watercolor, right? So these watercolor crayons were very popular when they came out. Um, I'm not a huge distress media mixed media i guess mixed media i've done a couple things mixed media i know it takes a lot of patience and you really gotta you know kind of just take your time so that's what i'm going to try to do to do today is to do some coloring here i do like to have my image in front of me and kind of just use that for some color reference so we'll lay that out And I like to start with my lightest. And I think I'm going to go direct from the crayon. And these are not watercolor pencils. They're watercolor crayons. Now, there is a way, right, I think I saw that you can kind of prop these up. Let's do this. 
and go right from the crayon. And I usually take like watercolor markers and scribble on my glass mat and go to my um, paper, but this this will work. We'll do this. Okay, this is working out fine. We can do it this way. And I was like, you know, I don't want to do markers, but I don't want to do watercolor pencils. And I was like, wait a minute, I have those, those crayons here somewhere, and I should really give those another chance and I know they're kind of you know distress line is kind of a muted tone isn't this cute though you know just the, the two little mice are kind of snuggled in the little leaf and it just reminds me of like you know being a kid and my dad uh, having the leaves all raked and then all you want to do as a kid is jump in the leaves. And as a parent, you did all that work. And you don't want your kids <laughs> jumping in the leaves. But as a kid, all you want to do is jump in the leaves. Now, our leaves, where we have leaves in my yard, now it's towards the bottom of the back of the yard. But um, they kind of all fall in the back and it's it's very leafy, very woodsy kind of back there. So my kids have never wanted to do that. Um, in the front of the yard, it's a very small tree. So I don't I don't think my kids would want to do that. Plus we have dogs. So if you're jumping in the leaves, you, you're getting a little extra surprise with those leaves. So my kids have never asked to do that. Um, but there have been yards where you've you've driven by and you're like, look at that nicely manicured lawn and you you can see the little glint in their eyes like yeah that's that's the yard if you're gonna go jump in somebody's leaves that's the yard to do it in right <laughs> that guy's yard and when we were growing up we were always told like don't do that like if somebody has their their leaves like piled up like don't do that because people put and, and, like, don't drive in somebody's leaves because people used to put bricks in their leaves because they, they would try to discourage you from doing that. I guess I should tell you these colors here, huh? Um, mustard seed is that one. And this one is Rusty Hinge. I will say they are super creamy and they are blending beautifully. And that's that's one of the things I get kind of scared of whenever I'm doing like watercoloring. Because if you go direct to paper, especially with markers, you go direct to paper, sometimes they don't want to blend. And you kind of get stuck with this, this line, this, this shadow kind of gets stuck there. Um, so when you go like this or you scribble on your, your glass or your silicone mat or something, and then you pick it up and then you go to paper, it gives you a little bit of time to kind of run that color out a little bit, blend it out. And I am not a mixed media artist. I will never be as good as some of the talented people that are out there. I just like to, you know, take a little bit, add some water, blend it out. That's, that's all I try to do. I think this is fired brick, so it's a little more red. Um... And I just continue to, to add those layers of color. And what's great is the artist who has drawn these stamps, don't let people fool you. People that, you know, um, that do a lot of this, it's practice. It's just a lot of practice. And they just follow. See, somebody else has already drawn in here these little dots and shadows. They've drawn the secret. And all you do is, you know, like when we learn as kids is stay in the lines. Well, somebody else has already drawn the map for you. And all you do is you follow these dark dots. Those are the shadows. So you just keep adding color where those shadows are. And you just add darker and darker colors where their shadows are. And if it looks too bright... You just keep adding darker and darker colors where they're shadow. And watercolors always tend to fade back. They dry into the paper. So if it's too bright for you, you just keep adding colors. This is peeled paint. 
So if it's too bright, you don't like it, keep, keep adding color, keep darkening it up, okay? If it's, if it's too dark and you don't like how dark it is, Add a little bit of water and the water will lighten it back up. You can dab it with a paper towel. Um, my friend Brandy, who is a true artist, Brandy, she doesn't post enough work. And Brandy's got a couple of boys and she's she's always making things. And um, she's the one who really kind of gave me insight on, on being an artist and she doesn't show enough work. Um, Brandy was always like, hey, you, you got to add... You got to add more lights and shadows and darkness and things like that. She's always trying to, to teach me things. And I wish she would get her, her YouTube and, and show more of her art because she really truly is an artist. See, now I kind of think this is getting a little muddy. I added too much water and too much green. And so here I would go in with a paper towel and I would say, okay, now I'm going to go in with the paper towel. And she said, she, she was so like, scrunch up your paper towel and make it look more organic and These are the, the silent people that kind of hide. Now, see, I've kind of erased all of those things thinking, oh, Nancy, you've erased. No, I didn't make it's watercolor paper. It can take it, and it's fine. It can go back in. It doesn't hurt anything to add that color back in. And thick watercolor paper, good quality watercolor paper, We'll take that and say, give me some more. Give me some more. We can do this. I have met so many unique, talented people through art, through... This I wanted to, and I, I probably mentioned it a few times, growing up, always thought I was going to be a teacher. Always thought I was going to be a teacher. My mom talked me out of it when I was, go when I was going through college. Nope, you're not going to be a teacher. And now, that's pretty much my job. I, I pretty much teach adults how to do their job. I'm a coach, basically, um, in a professional kind of standing. And um, now, you know, being... I don't like using using the word like influencer, right? I think people that throw that word around, oh, you're an influencer. I think that I am a teacher. I, I teach you guys how to use basically your foiling machines, really. You know, so the people that I get to meet doing this, when you guys come out to show, you guys teach me more than anything. When I get to meet you guys, the tips and tricks that you guys teach me, I think is so, so awesome and so neat when I get to meet you guys and you guys say, oh, I've, I do this and I, I do this and this is a little trick that I've learned a along the way or I learned this from someone. And, um, you know, I've, I've seen some people that have, you know, kind of said, hey, this is a trick that I've learned from somebody. And, and that's how we all learn together and grow this community together. And when there's a need, that's how other things are invented. And that's how we all we all share this knowledge. And that's what I really love about this community is sharing that, growing it. Now, look, this now looks so much better just by cleaning that up and starting over. Oh, yeah. Loving this leaf so much better. Okay. I think we're good with him. Our little leaf, little fall leaf, fall blankie. A little story time, talking to myself, so weird. All right. Um, I think we're going to go with, what do we have for colors? Let me see here. Let me turn this over. Let me do this. Let me take my little crayons out. Because this way I get to see... All right, so we have Walnut Stain, which I think we'll use for our tree, right? Which is this guy here, right? Hmm. 
Let me see if we actually color this, how saturated is that color? See, this is where I get kind of concerned because when I do this with watercolor markers or pencils, it's really hard to blend that out. I guess it's not too, too bad. You get a higher concentration of color, but sometimes it leaves some streakiness behind. That's not too bad. We can we can run with that. Since it's tree, tree bark. And remember, you can mix and match your mediums. You have markers, pencils, crayons, sprays. Don't feel obligated to just use one thing. I was more kind of reintroducing myself to these because I hadn't used them in a while. And I really wanted to test out this watercolor paper because I had not used this. And gotta say, it's taken a lot of water on and blending beautifully. So I'm very impressed with this watercolor paper. I was concerned that it's not super white, but for this scene, I'm okay with that. It's kind of an off-white kind of cream color and this being a fall scene nature scene. I don't need it to be white. Actually kind of helps me in this case. All right, I'm okay with my my little tree log thing here. This is what did I say it was walnut stain, yeah. And I'm going to layer up more colors here. I'm going to let this kind of dry in between. And as it dries, I'm going to add more depth, more color, but we need this to dry in between so I can add more layers of color. So while that's drying, let's color our little mice. I'm going to add a little bit of tiny pink. This is like a fuchsia though, picked raspberry. I just want a tiny bit of this, not too much. much on that one. We're going to have to use a lot of water to water that down. Well, it'll dry back, so it'll be okay. Okay, black soot. We're going to water that down a little bit to be the gray on them. So I was more concentrated on their head, and then as I went out towards their ears, you see how it lightened? And then as I come back down into the, their face, it'll be a lighter gray. Just going around that picked raspberry that was on their face. So I'm not, I don't have a whole bunch of colors here, but I'm making do with the colors that I have. Again, around their face, where the fur is, making do with a bright, a darker concentration. And then as I go out towards the ears, it's going to lighten up. And then again, around the face, the eyes, back down to the nose, it's a much lighter gray. And just going around where I already have that picked raspberry where it's pink. So I don't need a whole bunch of colors. Just layering colors that I have. Following the artist has already put in the shadows. So I just darker where those shadows are, lighter where there's no shadows. It's 
See, that's all I need to do. I don't need a whole bunch. I'm going to take a little more of this black soot and just kind of shadow around where their bodies are on this tree trunk. Just kind of following their shape. Now we can go back in with our brown walnut stain, right? I really want to load up my brush. Just kind of darken that up a little bit in certain spots. You see how that lightened immensely once it dried back. Now, just with the remaining color that's on my brush, just spread that out. So the darker colors will stay where it's dark. All right, that gave us a little more color. Okay, now we can work on our background. And I do like the bluish color they used. Speckled egg. Clean my brush off. Again, I'm gonna load this up. Let me show you what we got so far. I think this is coming together pretty nicely. I'm going to start around our little mouse, mice. And I want to be careful that I don't touch anything that's wet because that will spread that color if it's wet, just like any watercolor. Just want to just very careful be around the edge, but not touch anything that's wet. Just give me a little bit of background color here.
Henry. That's really pretty. And I really like that the crayons, the distress crayons, when they dry, they kind of dry matte. So this whole image, this scene, takes on a matte quality. Let me um, take the... Let me dry this. All right, so that's mostly dry, but the Distress Crayons, I think, do look pretty neat. They do have this kind of a matte quality when they're dry, so it looks very, very much like a watercolory look. This stamp, again, is called Snuggle Up, part of the new House Mouse designs over at Spellbinders. You can also pick up the different sets of watercolor crayons over at Spellbinders, and if you haven't, check out the new Spellbinders watercolor cardstock as well. Definitely recommend it. It took on a lot of water, a lot of me kind of scribbling in, um, and very little warping, very little, and no pilling at all, which is always a challenge with watercolor paper. Um, and stay tuned. I'll do another video coloring in the candy heart stamps, but there are several different house mouse. I know you guys love the house mouse stamps over at Spellbinders. If you enjoyed watching me color this, give me a thumbs up. I want to know what do you think down in the comments below? Have you tried any of these new um, distress crayons or the new watercolor paper? What is your opinion down in the comments below? Thanks for watching and keep on stamping. Bye guys.